Okay, in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you uh, one way that I tend to model my scenes. And I've got an exaggerated view of this scene with lights and the way I've designed the textures on here. But years ago, you had to use texture maps to make your scene look like anything realistic because the computers were so slow that you had to have a nice image on top of your surface to have it look like anything. But nowadays, computers are getting to be quite fast, and I have a preference to not use textures in general. In fact, the only texture I'm using in this particular scene is the texture that's associated with the height map, with the displacement map that I have set with, that I showed in the previous lesson here. Okay, and then, but a couple of things. Let's take a look at the distance. First of all, if I go off in the distance, you'll see my level of detail is considerably lower back down let me back out I'll show you from out here you can see out here there's not much to this scene so this kind of looks pretty flat and you might think oh the way you enhance it is to put an image on top of it and if you're using really high resolution textures that can really help I tend not to like texture maps near as much as I like to just model the scene so what I had done in here if you look from above I had taken one little circular area within here and I subdivided it further than at this outside edge and I added some fractal noise to this area to bring it to life that way because if I'm up close with within the scene I don't need the rest of this to be in fine detail and then the other thing that really helps bring these things to light is lighting and that's why I kind of showed a an exaggerated view of this lighting and you can see what I have is in here I have this orange light coming from the side kinda of like you might see with the sunlight in the morning to kind of enhance those ridges because you know it is when you start as an artist at the beginning like I did you know you get a surface and you want to paint it green solid green and it looks terrible but you know, a lot of it's about light so I have, a, I have a point light off on one side that's illuminating the side of this surface here and then where it's created these deep shadows like this I also have a light on the other side where is that light let's see I'll go up into my list there's Point, there's one point light. Let's see which one that is. That's the orange light you can see right there. And then the other point light is this uh, right here. And that's my shadow color light. So shadows, even though you don't, you can't really tell in here, but there is actually this color is illuminating this. Well, you could tell if I actually crank up the intensity a little bit. You'll see like this. And you'll see that see how it affects that darkened area so there's a little bit of that dark purple on the dark on the back side of this thing to balance off this orangish kind of light on this side and that helps bring this surface to life like this and then I don't need to worry about textures because it just oh I find it more useful and I don't really have any shadows per se this is just on the dark side because of the way I did the fractal surface and the way the fractal terrain did it I could actually add shadows to this but so in any case the point is if the lesson is that you don't always have to just hunt down high resolution textures to use in your scene because I tend to find that scenes like this if I zoom in just a little bit tend to work oh, I'm hitting my clipping plane but these tend to work better for me in a lot of cases it gives me more depth to the scene and so just uh, it's just something that you might want to experiment now that computers are getting much faster and if you're not having to run something at 60 frames a second in a game or something like that sometimes just all this extra detail looks a lot nicer than a regular texture map at least for me maybe for you maybe not okay well that's it for this and I'll see you in the next video